Well, good morning, everybody. This is Brother Leslie Wiles, pastor, King James Bible Baptist Church, 1402 East Fulton Street, Garden City, Kansas. Good morning, everybody. It is right at 9.30 in the morning on the eighth day of November, the year of our Lord, 2020. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb, friends? I sure hope you are. I know I am. By the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Everybody, come on in. We're going to have us a Bible study. We're going to have us a sermon. All right. Welcome, everybody. King James Bible Baptist Church, Garden City, Kansas. Amen. Amen. One of my favorite, favorite songs. If you want to get saved, if you want to go to heaven, you need to get washed in the blood of the Lamb. The Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Um, it is our Sunday morning Bible study. I'm starting a little bit late, but how it is. I need you all to keep um, Joe Acevedo. He's one of our members here. He has the flu. He doesn't know if it's the 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 the, the crud or not the the kung flu, but it is. Um, yeah, he's been sick, and just pray for him. Pray for Joe Acevedo, and all. Um, we had an election, and it's still up in the air. And um, basically, what is going on? We have a person who, um, for the longest time, has been um, involved in criminal activity. Him and his son, and so forth. And this press, this media that we have in this country has done everything they could to manipulate the democratic process in this nation. It's coming to the point where, I mean, people are talking civil war. The opposite of the, the, the other, the other guy said if Trump would have won, then they would cause all sorts of chaos. The fact is this, we're going to be talking about what's going to happen to this nation if it doesn't turn from its sinful ways. What's going to happen to this nation will be a just punishment. Some of you ain't going to like this sermon, but it's going to be, you need to know what's going on. Folks, um, before we get into the message and all, I want to lift up some folks in prayer. Okay. Brother Joe, I'll pray for him. Okay. Brother John Hickey, pray for him too. Okay. He came through here. He's, um, the Lord is working on him. How Lord open doors. Pray for Pastor Brian Kelly, New York City. I'm Brother Dan Price down in Texas. Brother Price is going to start him up a ministry real soon. Street preaching and video ministry too. You know, um, Christians are waking up all over the country and are, and are um, taking that great commission to heart and are going out and spreading the word. Now more than ever, with the wicked people of this world coming on the scene and the wicked again will be taking over. Now more than ever, we need to be looking up for our redemption draweth nigh. Amen indeed. Folks, get your King James Bibles out. I want you all to go to Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Now, I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> I've got quite a few, um, quite a few scriptures to, um, go over so we're going to be we're going to be doing a lot proverbs 14 and of course you know i had um i had um <laughs> marked it with a uh, marker proverbs chapter 14 it's king james bible all right we're going to go to verse number 34 give you all a chance to get to it well, it's a beautiful day outside. It's about 40, 50 mile an hour winds. I don't, it's Kansas for you. All right, 1434. Here ye the word of the Lord in the King James Bible. And it says, quote, Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Sure is. Look at the people who are running for office. 
Where do they stand? They are against Christianity and the Bible. They are against any and all forms of morality. They push everything from the sodomite homosexual agenda to the transsexual agenda to all sorts of abominations, to the murder of the unborn children and the like. You have people, Luciferians, these are demonics. They have came out, the gloves are off, the mask is off, and they've told people what they want to do, yet people still vote for them. The man is unscrupulous and he lies, and he puts his hands on children and on women. It just gropes them. People don't care. What are these people thinking? Oh, will I get a few extra dollars in food stamps if I vote for this guy? These people have made it clear that they want a global government. It's in the Bible. And you know what, friends? Let me tell you something. If you think for a minute that you can just get what you want for free, it's going to cost you more than you know. Let me tell you something, friends. There's nothing free in this world, okay? It costs somebody something. You're not going to get a free lunch from the government. No, it's going to cost you your rights, your liberties, and possibly even your soul. That's right. There's a move going on to destroy any and all forms of patriotism in this country. There's a movement going on trying to destroy any and all faith in God and his word, the Holy Bible. That's going on right now. Christians are asleep. Christians are playing church. Christians are going to these rock and roll churches, listening to these wishy-washy preachers, trying to keep their paychecks in their pocket and not leading people to the cross. And countless numbers are going to hell. And at the same time, society in this nation is heading down the toilet, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And we get so complacent in our sin. I'm spitting. When we get so complacent in the things we do in life, we're opening up the door for the devil to come in. And guess what? He comes in and brings his buddies with him. Yeah, he sure does. He brings his buddies with him. Lord, have mercy. You know, Psalms, book of Psalms, Psalms 1. Let me read to you what Psalms 1 says. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Better hear me. Hear the word. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, or standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in season. His leaf shall also not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like chaff, which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Okay? But now, in the ways of the law, now if you're a born-again believer, you're washed in the blood of the Lamb. You're not under the law. The law condemns. You're under grace. You're washed in the blood of Jesus. When you stand before God Almighty, you'll have the righteousness of God covering you. That is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the precious, holy blood of the precious Lamb of God. That's what you'll have. Okay. But it talks about this. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, or standeth in the way of sinners. But the light, and, all right. As a Christian, what are we to do? Okay. Well, first of all, we're supposed to bask in God's glory, praise him and thank him for what he did. 
See, as Christians, God did it all for us. We don't have to go do this A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z, tic-tac-toe, three in a row, and all this business. We don't have to do all that. We go to the cross. We trust the Lord Jesus Christ, and we study his word so we can grow. Amen. 2 Timothy 2.15, only the King James Bible says, Study, show thyself approved unto God a workman. Need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, what do we have here? Psalms. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Now, that's the problem. We've gotten away from God. And what is going on? The powers that be. You've got Hollywood. Let me tell you something. One of the biggest enemies of mankind is that Babylonian idiot box. It's that television set. You know, every day I got asked the Lord to forgive me. Why? Because I work at a place and I actually sell them things. Oh, but preacher, you know, that's just a TV. People, all people need to do is turn it off. If there's something inappropriate, right? We're showing up, but people aren't doing it. People are watching a bunch of junk. And I'm not talking just porn. Yeah, that's a lot of that stuff going on. I'm talking about Disney and this other junk that's so loaded with occultism and Satanism and Luciferianism, it's not even funny. And it's wizards and warlocks and all this crap. And it's Harry Potter business, warping the minds of already warped youth. Why? Because their parents' minds are warped. They don't know the Bible. They haven't seen a Bible or touched a Bible. That's a fact. That is a fact. This nation is a sin, one of the most sinful nations on earth. God has blessed this nation with all the freedoms, yet people choose to sin, choose to do that. Oh, freedom from God. No, you better turn to God. Well, the wrath of God is going to come upon you, friend. And you will be begging the mountains to fall upon you. All because you chose to abort that baby. Chose to live like the devil. Chose to reject the salvation that God provided for you. Who paid it on the cross free of charge. You reject that salvation. The wrath of God will be yours and you will deserve it. You will deserve it. We all deserve hellfire. But if you reject that gift of salvation, buddy, <laughs> enjoy it. Enjoy your eternity, turning and burning. You don't have to. But some people are going to do that. Some because of their pride. Let me tell you something. It is pride is what kills most people. That is, that's, that, that's, that's probably the number one thing that keeps people from going to the cross at Calvary salvation oh yeah yes indeed yes indeed that is true you know friends um let's go to matthew matthew let's go to matthew chapter 24 matthew 24 Matthew 24, verse 12. All right. <clears throat> now, let's go ahead. Let me go put it back into content. Let's, context. Let's go to, to verse 7. Right, let's go back to verse 5, okay? Verse 4. Let's go verse 4. Here we go. Here we go. Let's back it up. Here we go. Verse number 4. Ready? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Be famine, pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. And he goes on and talks about what the people are going to do, what's coming upon the earth. 
and they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and shall be hated, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. If you're a Christian, they're going to hate your guts. These people serve Satan. They don't care about the Bible. They don't care about God's word. They don't care about anything. And they're going to inherit a world full of evil, tyranny. It's going to be hell on earth. It's coming. And many shall be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. What does that mean? The love of many shall wax cold. Look at society. See, people, people die, people getting blown up. Oh, no big deal. Some puppy dog gets hurt. Oh, oh my God, let's fall apart. A dog got hurt. Someone hurt that cat. Oh, no one cared about ripping the guts out of a baby and murdering it in the womb. These people that practice these abominations, if they don't repent of their sins, they will spend an eternity in hell fire. They will hear the screams of those children that they have murdered or they supported in their murder for eternity. And they will hear it. And they will hear it. And they will hear it. And they will have regrets wishing they couldn't have done it. And every day they will be reminded of what they did with their life and how they refused to repent of their sins. The Bible talks about the wine press of God's wrath. Putting you in that wine press. That's right. Because you refuse the Lord Jesus Christ. You refuse salvation. You'd rather live like the devil. Oh, your day is coming. Your day is coming. Your day is coming. Why? Why are things happening in this country? Why do we have the problems? It's because of sin. S-I-N. And because people will not address that or won't talk about that. It just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Talk about a pandemic. We got it, baby. It's global. And unless you go to the cross for the cure, hell is where you're going to go. That's not my words. These are the Lord's words. How dare you reject the Lord? Your day is coming. Book of John. John chapter 3, verse 36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Let's say let's, let's let's go back over that. John 3 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. What does that mean? If you are unrepentant, if you're not saved, if you're not born again, if you're walking around here thinking, oh, I've been confirmed, I'm a Christian, you're not. Oh, I got baptized and blah, 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 you're not. Oh, I did this and I did that, you're not. And the wrath of God is abiding on you. And at any time, he'll call you home. Why, why do people go to hell? Because they think that they have something. They think that they can add something to get there. There's some people that just flat don't care. They think it's a joke. It's a fairy tale. Yet it's coming true. People are talking about global government. They've been talking about it for decades. They've got Georgia Guidestones. They made a monument telling exactly what they want to do. Yet people will not wake up. There are idiots out. I'm calling them idiots. That are so worried about their 401k. They're just focused on that money. They're money worshipers. Yeah, it's going to be funny. It's going to be sad, but it's going to be kind of funny. It's going to be humorous. 
to see these misers, these Scrooges, lose everything they had because they put their trust in the wealth of the world. What profit a man to gain the whole world but to lose his soul? For what can you give in exchange for his soul? What can you give in exchange for your soul? Oh, uh, I'm going to vote for this guy. He'll give me some more food stamps. Really? Are you going to have a job at the end of the day? Are you going to trust him or the government? Problem is, people aren't trusting God. If you put the Lord first, the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. All what things? Well, simple. God will provide a way to pay your bills. Okay, now you just can't sit around and not work. You got to work. You got to do something. God will provide that. But if you trust in him, he'll provide a lot more. That's a fact. You want to know what's going on in this country? Why, why do we have the problems that we have? Well, you know what? The idiots at YouTube decided to yank one of my videos. I talked about the pandemic of sin. Well, there's a pandemic of sin, and if you don't like it, YouTube, tough apples. <laughs> tough apples. Let me tell you something, guys. One of the craziest things of all people think that, oh, if when I die, when I die, okay, that, oh, um, God's going to call me up yonder. He's going to set me down and he's going to say, okay, here's all your bad. We're going to put it on this scale. And here's all your good. We're going to put it on a scale. If you got more good than bad, you get in. Uh-uh. The Bible makes it expressly clear, no sin, no sinners, no sin, nothing enters heaven but perfection and perfect righteousness. And the Bible says that men are not Righteous, none are righteous, no, not one. And the righteousness of man, the Bible talks about, is like filthy rags in the eyes of the Lord. So the Father sees the righteousness of man as nothing but filth. And he will not allow filth into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. So we have a problem, preacher. Sounds like, sounds like we're sinners, right? Yeah. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah. So we all have this thing, this sinful nature that if we don't we don't get it right, we wind up in hell. So what do we do? Well, we go to the cross. God became a man. John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. It goes on, I believe, verse 14. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Okay. God Almighty. By believing on him and what he did, you got your salvation. Amen. You know, the problem is that this country is looking for the wrong thing. You know, go to Second Chronicles 7.14. This is one of the greatest. One of the greatest. Verses in all the Bible. And I want y'all, 2 Chronicles. Go to 2 Chronicles. That is found in the Old Testament. Chapter 7, verse 14. I'll give you a second or two to get to it. You know, people are always looking for answers. Oh, we need to find answers to this problem. They'll look everywhere else but to God. They will look at everything else. They won't dare go to God until all hope is lost. Shameful. And you wonder why we got the problem we had. Verse 14, ready? Second Chronicles 7, 14. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. It says, quote, If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Wow. Let's go over that again. Okay? I'm not pulling any punches. 
And I'm not going to water it down with no wishy-washy, mamby-pamby nonsense. This is what the word says. You let it need to burn this into your heart, friend. <clears throat> if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will hear, heal their land. Wow. And that's true. You know, God is in the healing business. God is in the forgiving business. People in their pride, they don't want to go to the cross. They don't think that they are sinners. And that's the biggest problem. They think this is all a bunch of nonsense. Yet God is revealing himself daily in the lives of people all over the world. Yet people still won't repent. The book of Revelation talks about. I'm going to book of Revelation here in a minute. The book of Revelation talks about tribulation, the likes of which the world has never saw before. Why? Because of man's stubbornness and sinfulness and refusal to repent, to change their mind, to realize that you're a sinner. And to go to the cross for salvation. <laughs> That's the problem with this country. It's so full of pride. It's so full of itself. Hollywood is teaching people, oh, you're, you're the master of your own destiny. You're your own God. You do what you want. That's the biggest lie of Satan that ever was. Absolutely. Absolutely. Go to Revelation. All right. Revelation chapter 14. And um, I'm going to tell you something. This chapter is for those people. These are those. These are, I, I think these liberals, these are all, they're all going to take the mark of the beast. These ungodly devils who are running the world. But anyway, this is the prophecy. To all of you who reject the Lord Jesus Christ, some of you are going to reject it and fight it, and you're going to wind up in hell. I'm going to tell you right now, this is not my words. I'm not here to scare you or to make you mad. If it makes you mad, tough apples. You need to hear what's coming. You need to hear what's coming. Verse number nine, And the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark on his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into a cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. And their smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever, and they shall have no rest, day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whoever receiveth the mark of his name. If you get left behind in the tribulation, you're going to receive the mark, or you're going to die for the faith. Yeah, go ahead and turn that channel and run off. That's your problem. You still haven't repented. You're going to wind up in hell, friend, unless you stop your running, unless you turn to the cross. You're going to wind up in hell, and you're going to turn around, and you're going to see that sign and says, you asked to be here. This is your final destination. You chose this place because of your stubborn pride. I want this, I want that, I want the world, I want this. And you rejected God's grace. You rejected God's salvation. The lake of fire is where you're going to go. Let's read this again. You better, you better, you better, you better listen. Why do we have the problems that we have? Because of sin. Unless we address that sin and nail it to the cross. Hell is where we're going to go. And hell is where you're going to go. Unless you... Come to the cross and get saved. And the third angel followed, 
Same saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture. That's straight up, baby. Hmm. Into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of of the Lamb. Some of you ain't gonna like what I'm fixing to tell you. Some of you Southern Baptist preachers, you wishy-washy sissies, I'm talking to you. Oh, hell is a separation. Oh, it's a timeout. No, it's not. You're gonna burn, you're gonna turn in the presence of the holy angels, in the presence of the Lamb. You're gonna be cucking for eternity, and God is going to be there. There's no separation, friend. He's going to watch you burn because you rejected that gift of salvation. I ain't pulling no punches, friend. Preach, preacher, why are you so crazy? Because you're going to end up dying and going to hell because of your pride. Why is this country going to hell? Because it rejects God. It rejects the word of the Lord. It turned, it turned its back on God. And guess what, friends? The wrath of God is coming upon this world. You know, there are plenty, plenty of good Christians who love the Lord, who have to live in this abomination called the United States, an abomination called planet Earth, full of sin, full of perversion. The people that run the world, the people that run the governments are demon-possessed, satanically-possessed perverts who want to destroy you. They are the tools of the dragon. Mr. Lucifer himself, his time is short. I'm going to ask you something, friend. You to die right now, would you know where you go? Let me tell you something. You die without Jesus, only one thing sends you to hell. It's dying without being born again. Jesus said you must be born again. He didn't say anything about going to his mama or going to the Pope. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. That's right. Why do we have the problems that we have? Because we would rather live like the devil. Let me tell you something. You choose who you serve. And let me tell you something. There are repercussions to your choice. Rejecting the gospel is eternal damnation. You think your life is long? You can go home that quick. God can call you right now. You think you something? You ain't nothing. You come in this world with nothing, you leave with nothing. How dare you think that you're going to leave with anything? There ain't no banks in hell. You ain't going to open up no Swiss bank account in hell. You're going to burn because you rejected the only begotten son of God. And that's a fact. And that's every human being on this earth, not just Americans, not Democrat, not Republicans. I'm talking you need to turn from your sin. You need to knock off that crap that you're doing. Turn to the Lord while you still can. Because once, once the rapture happens and the church is gone, boy, you got your work cut out for you. You're going to die for your faith. Very few are going to see that. Most are going to take the mark and you'll become unredeemable at that point. It's coming. The wrath of God is coming upon this nation. And to all those that reject the gospel... All you Christians sitting there smug. All you smug, smart alecky Christians, you think that, oh, I'll go to church once a week. Oh, God will take care of this. Yeah, but you won't do nothing for the kingdom. What about it, Christian? At the judgment seat of Christ, is the Lord going to tell you, hey, your mom and dad made it to hell. Why didn't you tell them about Jesus? That wouldn't be very good, would it? That you wound up in heaven, but your family went to hell. Because you didn't take the time to share the faith. You didn't take time to read the gospel, to read the Bible to your family. 
and they wound up in hell. Come on, Christian, what are you doing? What are you doing for the kingdom? Besides lip service, besides sitting at a church, sitting on a pew for 30 minutes half asleep. Do you even have your Bible open? Are you even studying? Let me tell you something. What you put into this thing is what you get out. In fact, if you, by faith, if you put your put a little bit of effort into this book, let me tell you something. It'll be a jackpot. Your blessings for you. Yeah, this country's falling apart. <laughs> yeah, we've got it. We've got a satanically possessed person that's fixing to take office, an evil and wicked man. But it's okay. That's I mean, that's the people want that. That's fine. There are enough people in this world that will gladly embrace something like that than embrace truth and righteousness. They're blind. They think that, oh, you know, we can have our cake and eat it too. And they're going to wind up in hell. See, the Bible says that hell was a place reserved for Satan and his angels. It wasn't reserved for us, but yet, Man chooses sin and evil. Man chooses to blaspheme God, to curse God, to hate God. After God became a man and paid for it on the cross. You want to hate God, you want to reject God, hell is where you're going to go. The smoke of your torment is going to go up. And it's going to be in the presence of the holy angel. And who is the lamb? The Lord Jesus Christ. So yeah, you're going to be roasting and cooking and rightfully so. You better get off your high horse. You better get off your pride there. And you better repent of your sins and you better get right before God because your time is short. He can call you home anytime. Just remember, friends, once you enter the gates of hell and you turn around, that sign, <laughs> you chose to be here. God don't send you to hell. You send yourself to hell. Christ rejecter. Well, what must I do to be saved, preacher? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Guys, I cannot tell you. I cannot tell you. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to many people. That's a fact. Until we address the topic of S-I-N, that dirty, filthy, three-letter word. Unless we address that in our lives and go to the cross. And unless we deal with that, this nation will not get any better. It will get worse. And that is a fact. You want to live, live by sin? You want to live? God will punish you. Yeah. You think those leaders are good leaders? They care for you? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Hell is coming to this country. Judgment, terror is coming to an unrepentant nation who rejects the gospel, who rejects God and embraces sin. God will destroy this nation utterly, and it deserves to be destroyed because of its abominations. It stand on murdering the unborn and unnatural perversions of all kinds. The fist of God will come down on this country. Born again Christians, you better pray that the rapture happens real soon, and I think it's imminent. Only the Father knows. The rest of you people, you need to repent of your sins while you still can. Oh, well, preacher, you're crazy. Well, that's fine. I'll, let me be crazy. You're going to do what you want anyway. You're going to wallow around in that filth like a pig anyway. That's all you know. You call the good bad and you call the bad good. What do you expect? Your mama and daddy never taught you nothing because most of your mamas and daddies never went to church. I see two and three generations of heathen out here that never even touched the Bible. We live in the land of the free, the United States. Oh, preacher, we're a Christian country. No, we're not. We're heading for hell. We're heading straight for the fires of hell. This country, heading straight for the fires of hell. Why? Because we took our freedoms for granted. 
because we forgot who gave us the freedoms. God. These are God-given freedoms. God-given rights. We don't give them to ourselves. <coughs> when we forget and we turn our backs on the one who provides that freedom, guess what's going to happen? Tyranny is going to come. Israel rejected God and the enemies of Israel came upon them. It's going to happen here unless America repents. You don't like this message? Tough. Thus saith the Lord, repent or perish. This is Brother Leslie Wilde. Better get it, people. Better get it right. You better repent for what's coming upon this country and upon this earth. It's going to be terrible. The judgment is coming upon this country. It needs to repent. Turn to the Lord Jesus Christ right now for your salvation. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and save your soul. While you still got time, ask him the best you can. Salvation is the greatest gift of all. Don't say no to the Lord Jesus Christ, friend. This is Brother Leslie Wiles. Till next time, may the Lord richly bless you all. Peace.